Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is finally another recipe video. These are just some of the lighter, healthier recipes that I have been loving all summer long. Some of them are more snack bits, but then I have a couple like either full meals or they could be side dishes. So yeah, I just wanted to share. So let's go ahead and get into it. First up are these radish chips, which I was growing radishes in my garden and wanted to experiment with ways to use them. I don't have radishes right now. So I bought this bag of them at Trader Joe's, which I think is a seasonal situation because now I can't find them and I'm upset because I'm addicted to these radish chips. But I'm going to start by taking the radishes and these are like rainbow Easter egg radishes, whatever you call them. And I'm just going to put them in the colander and give them a good rinse just because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do with produce. So yeah, just rinsing those off and then I'm going to dry them off and then I'm just going to slice them paper thin. If you have a mandolin or whatever those things are called, that would work too. But I just love how colorful these are as well. Can we just take a moment? I thought this is what my radishes were going to look like, but then I've had two failed radish exper experiments, so I need to try it again. I'm actually planning on replanting them like tomorrow or the day after, so stay tuned on my Instagram for the second round of Radish Chronicles. But I, like I said, I'm going to be slicing them really, really thin, like as thin as I can get them. Um, I have experimented with different sizes in the oven and the, obviously the thinner they are, the crispier they're going to get. I really haven't nailed the crispiness of these chips. They are kind of mushy chips, but they taste so good that I don't really care. So yeah, I'm just slicing those up. And as you can see, this is how thin I'm slicing them. Um, I, measurements are not coming to mind, but they're pretty thin. As thin as I can get them with my little paring knife. So I'm just going to continue to slice up all the radishes. Then once all the radishes are sliced up, I just love all the colors, the pink, the purple, the white. I love it. Once they're all sliced up, I'm going to go out to my garden, humble brag, and clip some dill. Now this, basically, my friend Austin taught me how to make what people call crack crackers or something like that, where they're like ranch packet and dill oyster crackers. And so when I was experimenting with radish chips, I thought, what if I took that recipe and just put it onto radishes and see, see like how it tasted? And spoiler alert, it tastes great. So I am picking dill and I am just chopping that up. I really, really like dill, so I just used a ton. I apologize in advance, but I don't have exact measurements for any of these recipes. It's just kind of to taste and what I think looks and tastes good. So I put a bunch of dill in there and then I'm going to season it with some salt. Of course, I use my pink Himalayan salt the um, ground black pepper. I have some Trader Joe's seasoning salt. And then of course the Hidden Valley Ranch packet salad dressing seasoning mix. It's so good. So I'm going to start with probably like a fourth of that packet. If I was making more radish chips, I would have used half. Um, and then I'm doing the salt and the pepper and of course the seasoning salt. And you can really put whatever you want on these. If you're not a fan of the ranch packet or the dill, you could put whatever you want on these and just use this base recipe. But I am using half a tablespoon of olive oil and then I'm just mixing all those together with my hands just to get the seasoning and dill on each individual radish. So that takes a little bit of time. But yeah, I'm just doing that. Then I'm going to take my baking sheet and put the silicone baking mat on top of it. And then I'm just going to spread out my radishes. And what I've learned since filming this is that if you keep the radishes like around the border of the um, uh, baking mat, like if you just put them kind of in a square and not leave them in the middle, they will get crispier. So I do like to lay them all out as flat as I can and like not overlapping so that each of them gets a good roast, if you will. And I even topped these ones off with a little more Hidden Valley Ranch packet seasoning. Then I'm going to put those in the oven at 400 degrees and I usually gauge it. I check it every like five minutes because as you can see they get pretty crisp pretty quick but I think I had these in there for about 12 minutes and even though they look burned they're not those are like the extra good ones because they're extra crispy but even the ones that aren't completely crispy are so freaking good I know they don't look great but just try them they are delicious they have a little bit of a bite to them and they're so freaking good and then also a dipping option for these is my lime crema which it's not mine I actually got inspiration of this from HelloFresh. So I am starting by zesting a lime, which if you don't know what that means, you just take a zester and you use a lime and you kind of rub the skin on it and you don't want to get the white part because that's pretty bitter, but just, you know, the outer layer of a lime. So I zested pretty much the entire lime while I could, but I really like it really, really limey. 
limey, lol. And then I'm taking this uh, Greek yogurt. Uh, this is very Weight Watchers friendly. It's zero points if you use non-fat plain Greek yogurt. So that is what I did. And again, I don't have exact measurements. I should have used a larger bowl. Spoiler alert, we're going to have to go to a larger bowl here in a moment. I was trying to reduce the dishes I had to wash, but nope, did not work. But I am now juicing that entire lime. Again, I like it really, really lime flavored. If you want to just do half the lime, you can. And then I added a tablespoon of water. And basically, you want to add water to this and just keep thinning it out until it's the consistency that you like. I'm also seasoning it with salt and pepper. And then I'm just going to mix it up. And like I said... Once you get the lumps out, you just want to keep adding water, like maybe a half tablespoon at a time. This is the consistency. I like it. I like it a little bit runny. But yeah, it is that simple. Once you get it to the consistency that you like, it's pretty much done. It was four ingredients, so easy to make. And my favorite way to use this is on tacos. Sometimes I Instagram my tacos and you guys message me like, is that ranch on your tacos? No, it is my lime crema. I put it on tacos, I put it on chicken and sweet potato, I dip things in it, it's just the best and it will last in the fridge for about a week. Next up is this orzo pasta salad recipe that I actually got inspiration from from Jada on the Food Network. I've been watching a lot of her old show Everyday Italian on the Food Network app, so that's where this inspiration came from. But I'm using two cups of chicken broth and two cups of water, and I'm just going to get that boiling. You can do all chicken broth, but I find that just kind of wasteful, so I just do half and half to get the flavor of the chicken broth, but, you know, extend its life a little bit with just some water. And then once that is boiling, we are going to add in a cup and a half of orzo, which if you don't know what orzo is, it's basically like a rice looking pasta, but it's not rice. It is pasta. And on Weight Watchers, it's incredible. You can have a whole cup of this stuff for five points, which is amazing and goes a really long way. So I am pouring in all of that into the chicken broth and water mixture, just giving it a stir so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to let that cook for eight minutes. You don't want to let it cook like until the water is completely absorbed because, it, again, it's not rice. So after eight minutes, it is perfect. And I'm just going to drain that over the stove in a colander. And then you want to obviously get all the water out but then you want to let it cool a little bit. I like this dish, not completely cold, but not hot. So I, I do let the orzo sit for about like 30 minutes if I can. Then another humble brag, heading out to the garden to pick some basil as we need basil in this recipe. So I'm just cutting a bunch and bringing it in and I'm going to julienne the basil, which is a very fancy word for cutting it. But basically, oh, first I'm going to wash it and dry it because yes, it is outside in the nasty outside world with all the bugs. First, you pick off the leaves and then you roll them up and then you just cut them and make these almost like ribbons of basil. This is how I learned how to cut basil. I don't know if it's right. I think it is, but I like that it's a little bit smaller, but still pretty big. So you get a good chunk of it in your mouth. You could cut it much smaller if you want. This is just how me and Bradley prefer it. So again, I just stack the leaves on top of one another and cut like so, and you get really pretty ribbons of basil. I also have some cherry tomatoes as that goes in there as well. So I'm just now assembling everything. So I'm putting in the tomatoes. That's probably about a cup of just like grape or cherry tomatoes halved. Um, and then um, probably about a half a cup of basil. I don't know. Again, to whatever your taste desires. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a quick stir. The orzo is kind of sticking to itself, but once we get the dressing in there, it won't. So I'm adding a tablespoon of olive oil, the juice of an entire lemon. And this was a very juicy lemon that got all over the camera, as you'll see right now. There it was. <laughs> so I'm just juicing all of that. And then some red wine vinegar and random factoid. The red wine vinegar from Target is my favorite. This stuff was not as good. The just like, what's it called? Red pantry, red market, red pantry. You know what I'm trying? Market pantry, something. That red wine vinegar is my favorite. But after I put all those three in, I just whisk it up with a fork and then I am just pouring it around the edges and then I'm seasoning it with salt and pep, of course. And then I'm just going to give it a good toss and then that is it. So this, I think, serves four, maybe five, and it's a cup a serving because like I said, a cup of orzo is five points. So this is five points per serving on Weight Watchers if you do that. If not, it's just a delicious side pasta salad situation. It's great fresh when it's just warm like this, but it's also really good cold, which is why I like it for leftovers. And yeah, like I said, it makes four servings and it is delicious. Next up is, I was going to say maybe my favorite recipe, but no, I love all of these recipes equally. But this is gnocchi caprese salad situation. It is so good. So it's all things Trader Joe's. So I have a bag of the frozen cauliflower gnocchi from Trader Joe's. This stuff is all the rage on Instagram and people have found out that it's better to bake it than it is to cook it in a skillet because it gets 
gets really mushy. So I am, this was my first time trying it baked. This is my first time trying this recipe, by the way. It was a, an experiment and I love it and I'll be having it 400 more times. So I laid the gnocchi out flat on the baking sheet, sprayed it with some coconut oil cooking spray, put it in the oven for 15 minutes and then I'm like tossing them around, kind of flipping them onto the other side. Then I'm putting them back in the oven for another 12 minutes and this was on 425 degrees in the oven. So it takes a little bit of time, but then after that they come out like really almost like tater tots like they're really crispy but they're delicious like the way they cook in the pan is just too mushy and gross which is kind of the way gnocchi is but it just doesn't work with the mushy cauliflower so this is definitely the way to cook them I would say so once I let those cool a little bit because I didn't want them to be super duper hot and while those were cooling I cut up some or have some cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes and I also shredded two ounces of mozzarella cheese. Um, I'm on Weight Watchers, so one ounce is three points, so this serves two. You can use um, skim mozzarella if you want, but then we also need oregano, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and basil again. So once the gnocchi is cooled, I put it in a bowl. It's just assembling from here on out, so I put in the tomatoes. I put in the basil, like a traditional caprese, and then, of course, the mozzarella cheese. You could get those um, mozzarella balls, but this is just honestly cheaper, and just I always usually have a ball of mozzarella on hand. So I'm putting all that in. I am adding a little bit of olive oil, not much. I added a cap and a half full of balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, of course, and then for some reason, I really like dried oregano added to any caprese I'm making, so I added it in here. And yeah, that is pretty much it. After that, you're just going to give it a good toss, get all the gnocchi and cheese, tomatoes, everything coated in the dressing and have the basil spread out throughout it. And it is literally so good. Like this kind of wowed me away. I was thinking about putting shredded chicken in here as well, which I think that would be really good and make it a little bit more filling. But honestly, this was plenty fill filling and it should be about, I think, eight or nine points so it's a little bit of a heftier splurge but if it's for like dinner it's so freaking good so just give it a try and again if you're not on Weight Watchers it's just delicious and I think a fun way to use the frozen cauliflower bag from Trader Joe's because I feel like everybody has that in their freezer right now so yeah guys that is it I hope you enjoyed all four of these recipes please tag me in pictures if you make them and post it on Instagram but yeah I love you guys if you want more food videos I will have my playlist up in the corner and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys